boogie lovers and this is the uh, second lesson in the pine top boogie so why were we starting with um, another tune the jazz standards diode and I suppose the first uh, point I wanted to make is that whatever you learn in, uh, in this tune here you're going to find a lot that's transferable to other tunes that you may know I mean this um, this other um, jazz standard happen happens to be in E flat as well and so if you're learning some of the blues riffs that will work with Pine Top Boogie you can use those in a jazz setting uh, or you know round midnight And so I suppose that it's great um, when, you're learning, when you're learning blues and jazz to try and think uh, laterally and so that um, there will be things which you know from other tunes which other pianists, myself including, will not have thought of that could well work extremely well for the Pine Top Boogie. I mean the whole point of blues and boogie woogie is that it shouldn't be a museum piece it should be something that's constantly evolving I mean I'll be the first to admit that um, not everything that I play is perfect far from it plenty of mistakes and all the rest of that but I think if it sounds fresh um, if it sounds fresh and alive then that's far better than playing something that is you know completely perfect and just sounding like something that's exactly copied off a record. So um, this riff here that I was using um, in Dahoud here it's actually a, a, a minor a minor blues there, but um, it's going to work um, really well as an ending for the Pine Top Boogie. And that's what I want to address today is the beginnings and endings of this piece because if you think about it if you've got your main riff which was in the last video and then you got a beginning and an ending and if you can do all of those well then you've got a tune you've got a beginning a middle and an end and I think that's uh, another great thing about uh, the Pine Top Boogie is it's got a very distinctive um, uh, sort of opening break and as with any boogie woogie you can give it a very definite ending and I suppose um, my experience and I'm sure that many of you will have had the same experience is that when you're playing uh, when you're playing out or you're playing for other people if you start confidently and you end confidently then uh, that's almost people will uh, remember that more than, than anything else sometimes and so if you make a few mistakes in the middle of your tune but you're doing a and the whole band ends at the right time then uh, people will get the impression that you know what you're doing and I can assure you that in many cases I've got no idea what I'm doing but um, yeah learn your, your, learn your beginnings and your endings and start practicing them them quite early when you're learning a tune so that you will have had as many hours on that as on the other elements of the piece and then you know that you can always rely on them um, or that if you make a mistake you know it well enough to to um, get out of trouble now the um, there is a traditional um, uh, kind of a more traditional start to the pine top boogie and then there's one which I prefer which is um, taken from another Dr John piece called um, Mess, um, Mess Around I think it's from his album um, going back to New Orleans and um, it's this <laughs> Now, 
Now this this um, reinforces the point that I was saying to think laterally. I mean, part part of the way that you can be creative is that um, I mean, I happen to like really really like that particular um, start to the piece, and so I basically nicked that from one of Dr. John's other pieces, put it on the beginning of this. And then I suppose that's basically improvisation in its most simple form. You, you're kind of like a glorified magpie, nicking things from here and there and putting them together. And as long as it works, as long as it's still within the spirit of the piece, um, but it sounds new, well, that's where you want to be. Um, you don't want um, to start it off like sort of Grieg's sort of piano concerto. Rather. Okay. But uh, talking about that, there's a kind of a quite um, sort of almost classical start to the more traditional one, which I'll show you, and then, then I'll break down the, the two intros first. It's this. Okay, so that's really nice and dramatic, and I expect um, a lot of people will will prefer that one. Um, now, with this, let's start with the more, more traditional riff because it's got, um, in a way, it's technically more challenging because you've got this these trills in both um, in both hands. <laughs> But of course, you know, depending on where you are at technically, you could do something that's a bit, uh, a bit um, more pared down. And what's happening in this is like um, a lot of other phrases in in blues and boogie it's it's fairly basic you're just playing your one chord you're going up to the minor third here you might want to crush that um minor third there to the third one two three remember we're in the dominant e flat if we're playing a sort of boogie blues Light up here and then in terms of the walk up there's lots of different ways you can do it so basically as long as you're going up the triad of E flat and you can either go down to the fifth or you can go down to the um, the dominant um, seventh sounds nice as well and then you're straight into your riff and because this is a 12 bar blues the first four bars um, are a V flat of the one chord have been taken up with your opening statement if you like and then you're going straight into the four chord of your um, of the blues so you're in the A flat for your um, you know for the riff <laughs> Okay, uh, I mean, I think the or one of the really nice things about this riff is that there's lots of different variations you could imagine doing of uh, of your own. So instead of playing the chords, you might just want to do the octaves and try and do a trill there. You could play a chord there. So that's your minor third, and that's the fifth and that's the uh, dominant seventh there you go all nice and easy from a theory point of view and then um, one of the one of the kind of walk-ups I like to do is actually a walk down ending up with that sort of nice sort of chord that's almost like a Chopin chord with the dominant seventh in the bass okay um, so that's the more traditional riff 
and um, the the other one which personally I prefer is this okay and that sound there we're going to use a lot in Pine Top Boogie it's your um, diminished chord which is really um, a substitute for if you just change the A flat in this diminished chord to the sorry A natural to A flat then you got an A flat triad so really this dominant um, sorry not diminished chord this diminished chord is um, a substitute for the four chord the A flat dominant and the reason why I'm banging on about that is that we can use a lot of these ideas when we get to improvisation, but we need to understand almost what chord is implied when we got our when, when we're getting into improvisation in later videos, so we can make the the, the riffs fit properly with the rhythm. That's essentially what it's about. Um, anyway, so effectively, you're playing this diminished chord here and going to that which is your E flat dominant and it's I don't actually know exactly how I play it but I basically end up with the target notes roughly at the right time if you wanted to make it exactly the right number of notes you'd be like that and so what's that's basically the idea of it it's our, our old friend the sixth Remember, the um, our main riff is made up of six, but we got six instead in the um, uh, in a diminished chord. And uh, if you don't know these well, then then really learn them in all keys because they're incredibly useful and they just crop all the time. And so, yeah, learn all of them. So here we go. So it's basically a broken diminished chord going down. You're playing four note, four against three, but just get on your kind of next note at the right kind of time, and then it will feel right. So you're playing these six intervals all the time. That's why it sounds so good. This is our friend the sixth again. In, in fact, this is not too far off our um, E flat riff. If you were to flatten the, the the fifth there, so it takes a bit of practice to get that really, you know, nice, nice and comfortable. Once you got it, you're just repeating the the, the same thing again. And then this bit is, um, this is partly why, why I wanted to, to, to address these, op these opening and closing riffs first, because this um, opens the door to a lot of improvisation and good riffs that you hear all the time in Boogie Woogie. And you're going to use something that is very similar to what's called the famous lick in order to get down from here and these two chords at the end okay so what's happening here let's let's see where, where it fits in first in terms of the riff an incredibly important pattern and there's all the variations from that alone you could probably base a whole career as a blues um, pianist I know but I've almost managed to do that um, it's an it's a really wonderfully um, useful riff to know and you're just ending it with this you're going to the raised one chord, which is your. It's 
that's basically um, an E9 down to your E flat 9 there. You should know these chords, if not, then learn them in all 12 keys because you're going to find them useful in all the tunes that you play. Um, classical as well, they crop up all the time. And so, what's happening here with the famous riff? We've got that's part of the e, e major triad, isn't it? So you've got one five and a one there. And this is actually hinting at the four chord of A flat. Well, that's the E flat chord, but just with a leading um, minor third there. There we go, that's alluding to the like A flat or the four chord. Minor third back to the one. So it's kind of flipping between the one and the four chord. That's that's how it breaks down, and, it, and it's going to be important to know that for later. That's why I'm sort of labouring it slightly. Okay, I've given you the, what I would say is probably the easiest ending to this piece. And so here we go, uh, we're in E flat, minor third, second one, minor third, second one. Now we've got um, a major seventh here, and I said that we're not allowed to use that in um, in boogie woogie but that, that just goes to show that there are always exceptions to the rule when it comes to music if it sounds right it'll work and then we want a nice chord to end it that makes it sound like we know what we're doing how about that well you remember this is your e flat nine chord that we had from the first riff well we just use that in the left hand that's your three your dominant seven and your nine it's really a second but because jazz people like to sound clever or maybe there is a real use to it they call this a ninth and i suppose we know what we're talking about with the ninth chord one two three four five six seven eight nine okay and then in the right hand you can play anything from the e flat triad more or less see there there's a sixth there if it's in the scale of E flat dominant then there's a chance that it might work well and you can you can sort of uh, you can practice with all sorts of nice variations here why don't we try actually throwing a minor third here on the top uh, sort of a bit more of a dirty gut bucket sound if you want all right uh, so let's just revise where that ending would happen. So you've got your uh, five chord. This is another um, good chord here to use on top because you got your flattened fifth or sharpened eleven of whatever you want to call it this is your sixth of the E flat dominant scale it all relates to what uh, chord or key, key you happen to be in okay um, there are a bunch of other endings that you can do you could do a whole series of videos about that but I just want to show you my favorite uh, which is um, kind of a turnaround in the style of James Booker. And so where does that fit in? You see you've got to have this kind of... We're ending the, the phrase there. Um, 
And uh, so basically we got a sixth here in the um, right hand, six all over the place in um, you know in a good version of pine top boogie. And this is basically um, an E flat chord, but we got three on the bottom, the seventh and a fifth. That's an A flat. So there's a bit of sort of muddiness here in this bit. That actually sounds, if you play it on its own, it sounds horrible. But it kind of works it as a passing note. It makes it sound sort of really nice and dirty. But really what it's referring to is uh, again, our friend, the diminished chord here. And that is basically your E flat triad, but with a minor third. And we had this before, remember? This is your E9 down to your E flat 9. Great. Till next time.